getting updates all day and I was there when you said that uh, Ian had moved from a tropical storm now back to a hurricane. Yeah, it only took about five miles per hour, so it uh, strengthened a little bit. It's now a hurricane east of Florida right here in Savannah, Jessup, Charleston, Bluffton, Buford and the low country. It's still down to your south southeast. The center of circulation pretty easy to pick out on the radar and there is a huge swath of heavy rain that is just offshore. The rain that's moving in right now, we could see it on our Chatham Parkway camera. Just a few raindrops on there. These are some light to at times moderate rain showers. Nothing all that heavy spreading across our coastal areas. Let's show you the updated forecast track of Hurricane Ian. Winds at 75 miles per hour. Movement north northeast at 10 and it is going to start picking up a little bit of forward speed over the next 12 to 18 hours. Right here is the position later tonight. Friday afternoon, potential landfall near or north of Charleston and then weakening to a remnant lower tropical depression as it moves into the Carolinas. Tropical storm warnings for most of our area, coastal Georgia, and then a tropical storm watch farther inland for Screven County down through Tattnall County. If you're wondering about Jasper and Beaufort counties, due to the close proximity of landfall, a hurricane warning was issued earlier today, but that little slight bump to the east of the forecast track we really think some of the coastal areas here could have winds potentially gusting 50 to maybe as high as 60 miles per hour. Probably not going to see hurricane force wind gusts. That is definitely our forecast. And right now we've had uh, winds about 35 to close to 40 miles per hour. They were a little bit stronger earlier. We're expecting those to ramp up as we go through this evening. Outside our weather window along Highway 278 in Hardyville, South Carolina. We've had a little bit of a breeze there. Some winds around 35 miles per hour. Those are the peak gusts. Pavement is dry at the moment. You will see the rain start to move in this evening. Let's talk about that now on Futurecast. Center of Hurricane Ian. So easy to pick out on this forecast interpretation. We'll pause this at 3 a.m. Remember the winds start to pick up tonight. A little more rain works its way north of I-95 towards the low country. Coastal areas will see the heaviest rain in the low country. And then the potential landfall, let's speed ahead to tomorrow afternoon. There it is, southeast to Charleston, and then moving uh, potentially north of Charleston, uh, maybe even up towards that Grand Strand area of South Carolina. If you're south of I-16, there is just not much rain in our forecast, and then our weather improves for the weekend. It is all about locations across our area and the impacts you see. For more details on that, let's continue our team weather coverage with meteorologist Victoria Coquinos. Just as Jeremy said, we're already starting to see some impacts across the area, especially with those winds starting to see the rain pick up just a little bit. But let's take it a little bit closer to home where we'll see the greatest impacts. And this will be east of I-95 towards our coastal areas, and that's all the way through Friday evening. Now, some areas, especially closer to I-95, could see about a half an inch of rain. But as we make our way closer to uh, the coast, we can see about two inches for some rain. So rain isn't our main concern with this. We will see wind gusts from about 45 to 55 or more miles per hour hour. Tybee's already had a gust up to about 43, Savannah at 46. So we are expecting those winds to pick up as we head through the evening. Coastal flooding is a threat, especially as we go towards Friday at noon. High tide is expected to be just below 11 feet. And normally when we see that, that does close Highway 80. Now towards the low country as that storm, as Hurricane Ian makes its way towards South Carolina. Now some areas towards Coastal Beaufort could pick up two or a little bit more in those rain totals. Rainy at times, it's not an all day rain. We're still expecting wind gusts towards about 55 miles per hour or more, especially towards Hilton Head and again, Coastal Beaufort, watching for those power outages with the wind. But as we travel west of I-95, south of the Altamaha River, we aren't really expecting too much. There is going to be a sharp cutoff with these rain totals. Some areas could see not even any rains, a few sprinkles out there towards a trace or in half an inch gusty winds. And we are expecting winds still about 40 to 50 miles per hour. So winds are our main story with this, especially in inland. Not much rain expected as we go towards again west of I-95 or south of the Altamaha River and it will be dry at times as we head toward as we head towards Friday. So our biggest concern with this will be heading in towards Friday with that high tide for our coastal flooding. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss it back to Jeremy for a look at tomorrow afternoon. Jeremy. Yeah, it's really the storm surge combined with high tide and the forecast incorporates that storm surge. A high tide just before midnight. So late this evening around 10 feet. Tomorrow, this is the one we're really watching, a forecast high tide 10.9. That would represent the third highest 
tide all time at Fort Pulaski. Uh, that would be major coastal flooding that starts at 10.5 feet. So we have to watch that so closely. Our forecast now tonight, coastal rain that will start to spread inland a bit. Wind gusts could top 50 miles per hour at the coast tomorrow. Rainy at times. The winds start to relax after about 3 p.m. And then Friday night decreasing clouds. The weekend forecast, it looks so much improved. Upper 60s and then Saturday and Sunday lower 80s. Yeah, a big warm up this weekend. Hopefully we don't have too much cleanup across our area. Next week is mainly dry with 70s to low to mid 80s for highs and some nighttime lows back to the upper 50s to the lower 60s. That's a look at the area's only 10 day forecast. We'll be right back.